Hello, everyone. Welcome to Creative Bio Labs. Today, we are going to introduce the Life Biotherapeutics, developing next generation probiotics to treat human diseases. We will discuss what is Life Biotherapeutics, the history of probiotics, and next generation probiotics, the potential of biotherapeutics to treat disease, Life Biotherapeutics in clinical development their discovery and development process, and Creative Biolabs Life Biotherapeutics Services. First of all, what is Life Biotherapeutics? The US FDA Drug Evaluation and Research Center has a relatively clear definition of Life Biotherapeutics, and it has also given guidelines for early clinical research of them. In the guidelines, the FDA pointed out that live biotherapeutics refers to the biological product that contains live organisms, such as bacteria, is applicable to the prevention, treatment, or cure of a disease or condition of human beings, and is not a vaccine. We know that the first generation probiotics are primarily used as food and dietary supplements. However, next generation probiotics are often used as medicines in the clinic. Some researchers regard live biotherapeutics as next generation probiotics. Therefore, if we want to understand live biotherapeutics, we must start with probiotics. From this timeline of probiotics and next generation probiotics, it can be seen that as early as the 1950s, pasta a famous French microbiologist discovered lactic acid bacteria. Later, researchers isolated lactic acid bacteria from milk, and then bifidobacterium and lactobacillus acidophilus were also reported successively. In the 20th century, people generally recognized that this type of bacteria was good for human health and gave them the general name of probiotics. Until 2001, FAO and WHO gave a clear definition of probiotics, that is, living microorganisms. Appropriate consumption is beneficial for human health. In 2003, the whole genome sequencing of the first probiotic strain was completed, marking the arrival of the probiotics genome age. In 2016, the FDA and CBER issued guidelines for life biotherapeutics, affirming the medicinal value of next-generation probiotics. The potential of life biotherapeutics is huge, and the diseases that can be treated include skin diseases, endocrine diseases, gastrointestinal diseases, genital urinary diseases, cancer, and so on. The figure shows the percentage of the treatment field of live biotherapeutics in the total pipelines of corresponding diseases. Among them, gastrointestinal diseases account for the highest proportion, reaching 32%, followed by skin diseases, up to 21%. This table shows part of the list of live biotherapeutics that have entered the clinic. Currently, Field life biotherapeutics have been approved. The example in the table is Mutaflor, which is a life biotherapeutic product developed by Escherichia coli Nissel in 1917 and is mainly used for the treatment of irritable bowel syndrome. Another one is Mayari 588, which is developed from Clostridium butyricum and is mainly used to treat intestinal diseases. The above two are approved life biotherapeutics. In fact, most of them are in clinical and preclinical stages. These drugs focus on autoimmune diseases, tumors, and infectious diseases. The composition of strains includes lactobacillus, salmonella, bacteroides, etc. Life biotherapeutic products have broad application prospects for disease treatment to develop live biotherapeutics, a series of preclinical and clinical studies are needed. The preclinical research process of live biotherapeutics is divided into four parts. 
The first part is string isolation, culture, and identification, among which the identification of strings is the key point of preclinical research. The second part is the safety evaluation of the string, which is also a very important step. Part three and part four focus on the research of drug efficacy and mechanism respectively. This image shows the pathway to regulatory approval for live biotherapeutic products, including the above mentioned identify LBP, characterize LBP, produce LBP, and some clinical trials. In the isolation, culture, and identification of strains, the process of bacteroides vagalis to develop live biotherapeutics can be taken as an example. First, observe the morphology of the obtained strain to find out whether it is hemolytic and whether it can be moved. Then use the gram staining method to identify it as a gram-negative bacterium. Observe the size of the bacterium and some ultrastructures through the light and electron microscopies. Finally, 16S rRNA sequencing is used to further clarify the taxonomic status of the strain through gene bank comparison. Then comes the safety evaluation of the strain. This picture shows the biological safety test process of Streptococcus macedonia. The process can be divided into three aspects. The first is the routine research on live microbial preparations, including morphological examination, physiological and biochemical identification, hemolytic test, drug sensitivity test, etc. The second aspect is research based on whole genome sequencing, including genotype identification, virulence factor analysis, and drug resistance gene analysis. In addition, it is necessary to evaluate the cell adhesion to consider the influence of the bacteria itself on the cells. The safety evaluation of strains is very important, and it also determines whether the strains can meet the needs of subsequent industrialization. In the part of drug efficacy and mechanism research, we take Acamensia mucinifera as an example. The figure shows the effect of A. mucinifera and derived products on host metabolism. A. mucinifera has been found to be lower in several conditions, such as obesity, diabetes, intestinal inflammation, liver diseases, or chronic alcohol consumption. This is associated with an altered gut barrier function, leading to increased plasma LPS levels, and eventually triggering low-grade inflammation and metabolic disorders. A. mucinifera alive or pasteurized, as well as A. Mug 1100, has been shown to restore gut barrier function, likely by acting on TLR2 and restoring appropriate tight junction expression. All these results are associated with an increased mucus layer thickness and an improvement of metabolic disorders. It's worth noting that an exploratory human investigation has shown that A. mucinifera is safe. Then we turn to Clostridium butyrate, Mayari 588. Clostridium butyricum Mayari 588 is a probiotic bacterium that has previously been used to prevent antibiotic-associated diarrhea. Here we show that Mayari 588 increased the abundance of bifidobacterium, lactobacillus, and lactococcus species in the gut microbiome and enhanced intestinal barrier function of mice with antibiotic-induced dysbiosis. Additionally, Mayari 588 significantly promoted the expansion of IL-17A producing gamma-delta T cells and IL-17A producing CD4 cells in the colonic lamina propria, which was closely associated with changes in the intestinal microbial composition. Mayari 588 also plays an important role in controlling antibiotic-induced gut inflammation through upregulation of anti-inflammatory lipid metabolites, such as palmitolic acid, protecting D1, etc. Creative Biolabs has grown into a leading CRO in the field of live biotherapeutic drug discovery. 
with high-degree experts specialized in different fields of biopharmaceutical. Our analytical development and qualification services for LBPs cover microbial identification, potency test, gene integration stability test, biological safety test, host microbe interaction tests, etc. We also provide high quality LBPs, CGMP manufacturing services with dozens of bacterial strains that can be developed as LBPs. The scope of services covers microbial fermentation, purification, stabilization, formulation, downstream process development, as well as packaging, fills, and lyophilization services. Please contact us if you have any questions about live biotherapeutics. We will provide the most appropriate solutions according to your needs.